Greetings from KL, my friends. We now think that every part of that system is involving glaucoma. Then it would make sense to try to preserve the system as much as possible. It's a great device. I love showing it to the trainees. Putting in, taking out is so much quicker. It's really streamlined the whole process. You do seem like you're enjoying yourself with that, playing around. It sounds really cool. It's a beautiful procedure to watch. It's very satisfying to see that you're treating the actual system itself. And I think that's the best way to treat glaucoma in these early cases. Greetings from KL, my friends. We're here at the APAO 2023, and we're talking canaloplasty and trabecular mesh work with Dr. Jason Chang of Sydney Eye Hospital. It is so great to be here with you in Kuala Lumpur, Jason. Yeah, no, nice. thank you for speaking to me. Let's start off with some trabecular mesh work talk. Many think of it as the primary point of resistance in glaucoma. There's a lot of treatments out there looking to bypass or remove the trabecular mesh work tissue. How do you see the role of the TM as a therapeutic target in the treatment of glaucoma? Yeah, traditionally we always think about the mesh work as a main resistant point. Um, and a lot of the medications, a lot of the lasers, SLT is targeted at the mesh work. Uh, but now that we've had all these new devices, we'll be able to look a bit deeper and see what's going beyond it. There's a mesh work and behind that you've got the Schlems canal, and then beyond that you've got the collector channels and that drains on into the episcleral venous system. So we now think that every part of that system is involving glaucoma. If you're thinking that the whole system is involved and it's important in physiological drainage, then it would make sense to try to preserve the system as much as possible. Right. There's also talk about the canal itself having a sort of pump action and has some sort of physiological process where it's not always open. Sometimes it's closed, sometimes it's open. So again, if you're sort of de-roofing or sort of removing aspects of that, I think you are uh, potentially causing more harm. We don't know but sometimes it's better to do less harm, and then you always have the option of going back and doing more if you need to. I wanna just note that it's really interesting talking about the architecture of the system, because usually we're talking about IOP control in you know, fairly simple terms, yeah. but what we're talking about here, it, it seems really advanced. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So with more research coming out, we'll be able to do more imaging. We, with the devices we have now, the, the quality of the optics, we can see things that we could never see before. So we see these micro perforations in the trabecular meshwork with the canaloplasty, which improves outflow. What's the mechanism of action at work here? When you're putting this micro catheter around the canal, so you're actually putting the catheter itself into the canal, and within that canal, you're injecting viscoelastic material, a gel. And you can see what the gel's doing because you can see it on the microscope. And as you're coming back, sometimes you can see the gel coming into the anterior chamber. If there's a bit of pigment on the um, trabecular mesh, you can see the pigment being pushed into the anterior chamber. So yeah. you're clearing it out for sure. You can see it happening. And in the same way you can see it coming forward, you can see the gel going backwards as well. So into the canal, into the episcleral, you can see the gel percolating. We call this a blanching effect. We see these red vessels, juicy vessels becoming white. And it's this kind of ring of whiteness around the, the limbal area. And you can see that happening as you're doing the process. So you know you're treating something. You're treating it downstream and upstream. That's surely going to open things up. You know, you're, you're rejuvenating the angle, um, the system physiologically, and you're preserving all tissue to help lower that eye pressure. Well, you know, usually I'm used to talking about viscoelastic when it comes to the capsular bag. Yeah. So this is such a, a new and novel uh, technique. Because the material is, you know, we've been using it in the eye for a long time, so we know it's safe. As you're injecting the viscoelastic into the canal, that's done by your assistant. So your device itself is in the eye, and that's connected outside of the eye by your assistant, who's holding the device where the can canister of viscoelastic is, and they're turning. And when they're turning, it makes a click. Right. So one click is one bolus of material being injected through that microcatheter. You're counting as you're withdrawing the device out of the canal. So I'll say one, two, three, and the system will be clicking one, two, three. So I'm controlling how much of this uh, viscoelastic is being injected into the canal. Mm. Um, and then also based on the speed of which I'm retracting it, I'm, I'm controlling where it's being put in, how much I'm putting in, and, and you can kind of play around with it a little bit as, and then you're aiming for that blanching effect. So sometimes if I don't see a blanch, I might go back and try to treat that area again just to see if I can push an extra bit through as you well. You do seem like you're enjoying yourself with that, playing around, but uh, yes. I mean, in a scientific <laughs> way, but uh, it sounds really cool. No, it's a, it's a great device. I love showing it to the trainees. Yeah. So, so when I'm in the theater, the, the trainees are there watching me. So as you're passing it through the canal, you see this flashing lights. And so you can see it in the canal going 360 degrees all the way around the eye. So you're looking at the anatomy because these trainees are doing their anatomy exams and looking at the canal and they can see it going around and go, oh, wow, that's really cool. And then they see this blanching effects of it coming down at the system. So they're thinking, okay, this is how it works. It's making sense of that knowledge that they're achieving. So I could see a young ophthalmologist really enjoying yeah, that procedure. It's great. Do you think reestablishing the trabecular mesh work is a viable approach in all patients? In patients who have on a lot of medication, 
um, who are not controlled, despite being on three or four drops, who don't respond to SLT, for example. This group, if you try to address the angle through surgery, probably is a bit more disappointing, the results. On the other side is on the early to moderate group on one or two medications. Um, in that situation, when you know most of the system's still healthy, if you do the operation at that point, you're gonna get great results. And we've seen that in a lot of those studies that are coming through now. What's been your clinical experience with canaloplasty in treating primary angle closure patients? So we have a poster here actually, um, looking at that same group. So we have about 40 patients that we looked at prospectively over a 12 month period. It's a multi-center trial from six different sites and six surgeons. Most of them were combined with cataracts, some of them were as a standalone in angle closure disease. What we're seeing is that they respond really, really well. So our patients often start with a pressure of 21 on two medications. And after a 12 month period, we're able to sustain them at pressures around 14, 15 on about half the medication. So you've really dropped the pressure and you've dropped the medication, which is really important. I see you use the eye track in a lot of the canaloplasty procedures. So what's behind that choice? So I think it's, it's, it's effective. It's a beautiful procedure to watch. It's really fun to do. It's really satisfying when you're seeing that microcatheter going 360 degree around the angle. Yeah. And watch what we said, just send that blanche effect of so that flow coming through. It's very satisfying to see that you're treating the actual system itself physiologically. You're not bypassing it. You're, you're trying to rejuvenate what's existing there. And I think that's the best way to treat glaucoma in these early cases. Fantastic. Have you always used the iTrack system, by the way? Or you know, if not, when did you start using it? So we had the iTrack, which was the iTrack Classic. Um, and that's what we used before. We've recently had the iTrack Advance. It's really come forward and, and given us a better option. And it's so much easier to perform this procedure now. Okay, so you've kind of upgraded uh, the equipment, so to speak. Any yeah. particular reason? With the Advance, it's a single handheld device and it's controlled with a sliding device with your finger. So your finger goes just forward and backwards, so that's a movement. Uh, you don't need to make a main wound incision if you're not doing cataract surgery. You're coming through the side port alone. You fill the eye with a viscoelastic. You come in with this device. So this device is curved with a slightly sharp tip at the edge. And with that tip, you just want to penetrate gently the meshwork to just slide it into the canal and then you can see the flashing light as you're advancing with your finger. And you can see that flashing light with the microcatheter just passing into the canal. Yeah. And then actually it goes really, really fast. So you just advance your finger a little bit and you can see it begin to go around. And it just slides. It's just like 10 seconds, bam, you're all the way at 360 degrees. And then as you're withdrawing, the same thing, you go the other way with your finger, you're pulling backwards with your finger and you're watching that flashing light come backwards around you. Putting in, taking out is so much quicker. So um, it's really streamlined the whole process. What are your surgical pearls for surgeons new to canaloplasty and the eye track? So when I'm teaching this to the trainees, I think any, any angle surgery, the key really is the positioning. So you want to be tilting the, the head in the right position. You want to be away from you. You want to get your microscope in a good order. You want to be comfortable. And then you want to have the eye in position. You put your gonal lens in and you want to focus. Zoom. I like to zoom really, really close in. Spend a lot of time focusing to make sure I know what I'm doing. Um, so that's the, the, the biggest pearl, I would say. So the second pearl would be um, when you're coming with your device with the eye track advanced. And when you enter into the meshwork, it's semi-transparent. So okay. you want to still be able to see it. You just advance a little bit and you can see the tip through the meshwork and then you, you feel you're pretty ready to go. I know that there's a lot of surgeons around the world who know you and have a lot of respect for you. All in all, would you recommend your peers to adopt canaloplasty? We're really sport for choice now in the space of you know what to do in this. You've got the mild, moderate, advanced glaucoma, and along the way, you can have a lot of choices. So I think um, this should definitely be in everyone's toolbox. You have the option of using it. It's not suitable for every case, but there's certainly some cases, for example, angle closure has been talking about. I think that works really, really well, and we've got results to show that. And regarding the eye track specifically, I guess that's a recommendation. It works really well. So, so it treats 360 degree of the angle. You're treating all parts of the system. Um, so it does offer something different to what the other devices show as well. So, so it's, it's, it's a really nice, neat device. It sounds like there's quite a lot of momentum here for MIGs like canaloplasty and the eye track. These procedures are gonna make a big difference, I can tell, especially in Asia. So it has been my absolute pleasure here to talk to you about this great innovative topic today, Dr. Cheng. Great, thanks so much for having me.